<laughs> I'm sorry, Ed. Everybody's been telling me stories, but yours are the biggest. One of these days, I'll have to sit down and watch the whole thing. I'd like a, a copy of it, you know, and watch the whole start to end. It'd be nice to have. That'd be awesome. So what we're doing is we're going to show you all the work we did on the nugget. Yeah. And see what you think. Okay. So it's... It's about four months worth of work in 32 minutes. <laughs> We're gonna left the golden nugget so we can wash it. Pick it up. All right, we're gonna pre-soak this, then we're gonna suds gun it. We're gonna get this thing washed. So this is after Paul it's put the engine like in and everything. Looks like they drug it through a river or something. Look at that, it's all smashed. Break. We're gonna get the nugget torn apart. So these ones are coming out pretty easy. Okay, we're gonna get the door pulled off. All right, the other door's off. Just like that. This should just come right out. Oh, that comes apart pretty good. That comes apart pretty easy. Yeah, surprising pieces like that. Yeah. Yeah. So far, so good. Bolts are coming out. Okay. Got the roof bows out. So far, so good. Okay, coming backwards. Can we get this put in? Guide it, hillbilly. You ain't going nowhere. It's always frustrating for me to watch these videos because there's so much work to do. And even though I know it's already done, I can go back to this and then I get even extra anxiety yeah. because of how much work is left to do. I was, I was just thinking that. This was in February, Yeah. this portion. And what we did is we disassembled it, disassembled it all and you'll see in a minute, we put it on a rotisserie. She ain't going nowhere. So we're gonna get the motor and tranny out. All right, hold it. Oh, you even took the motor out. Get the steering column out of the way. We'll get the pedals out of the way. The column is out. There you go. All right, we got the vent. I'm trying to heat the nut up so it'll come off. That didn't work. <laughs> this is the last screw in the firewall. It's way cleaner than it was. I've got that welded, red hot. Look at that. That's how you get stuck, stubborn, broken bolts out. Cross members out. Now we're gonna get the exhaust pulled out. Okay, push. Good job. Now we're gonna get the shocks out. So we're gonna drop this side off. Swing it down. Now we're gonna get the steering box out. That was hard. All right, we're gonna pull this fuel pump off, and that's how we do that. Yeah, there you go, look at that. I'm gonna get this brake caliper right. pulled off. Believe that. Yeah. So this frame, that's your frame from the nugget. You'll see in a second, we fix where it hit the rocks going through the river. <laughs> Oh, there's the hub. Right. Now we are down to the knuckle. Whoa! That is the cutest little axle shaft I've ever seen. Feels like Tootsie Rolls. I thought Paul was supposed to do all that. Well, they, they have to take it apart yeah. to paint it. So, he, oh. so Paul did all this before it came to us, and then it just didn't get wired and a few button-up things at the end. You have to pull an axle out to paint it? You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Two more U-bolts, and this front end is taken apart. I almost forgot we have some broken bolts. I think this one might work. Okay, good. Slowly but surely. All right, we got the broken bolt out. Okay, let's see if this works. It worked! Yes. Well, look at that. Cool. Whew. All right, so this is where 
it went through the river and hit the rocks and oh. bent the frame. Oh, I didn't know it bent the frame. I thought it just bent the bumper. Or or maybe that's from the wreck. We, we yeah. drug it over a lot of rocks. <laughs> yeah. We so didn't do it like... Oh. It could have happened at any point. But it's this is where we're straightening that all out. We'll call that side good enough. Wow. We're going to turn this into that. So this is just going to go in like that. We're going to weld it in nice and tight. We're going to make sure that the hitch comes out far enough. Okay, so we can go in like another inch. All that work for one little mark. We're going to get it welded just like that. Hey yo. So this is the hitch that we built. Now I'm just going to get it welded up. Now we got to put the gussets on and weld those just like that. All that so we could build a trailer for the Rocon. It didn't have a hitch before. Huh? Nope, that's what we built. Oh. It had a, like a D-ring, but now you've got a hitch. Yeah. Got the top all welded, now I'm just gonna burn it in the bottom. I got, pretty nice. I got scalded by the internet for quenching that. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That don't hurt a regular <laughs> metal. It will. It's not on, tempered. On tempered steel. On it's just mild steel. Tempered now. Yeah. It's <laughs> that ain't going nowhere. The head of the screw. So this side is off. Those rivets were all just broken. Popping the rivets that Robbie drilled out. All right, number two is off. Look at that rust all hiding. Right here, it got welded. So we're just gonna hurry and cut that weld off so it disconnects. Ta-da! One down. Look at that. We're all disassembled. We'll get that all cleaned up nice like. Front and rear housings are ready to go. Okay, we're getting the inner handle, the latch assembly, and the outer handle all disassembled. I think we're gonna get this one sandblasted. This latch assembly is in surprisingly good condition. I'm gonna put nut zerts in, and then these will be removable just like that. So we can get that exhaust in and out a little bit easier. Put everything on a pallet so we can take it right over the sandblaster. It's all just black. Okay. Now I'm gonna wor uh, work on getting this door guide out. Careful with the tabs so they don't break. Okay, so I got it, the window channel pulled this far out. It's so cracked, brittle, ripped in half in some spots. Pause it, Chris. So what we did there is we took all the housings and everything and had them all sandblasted and powder coated. So the whole frame and axles and everything are all powder coat. Bada bing, bada boom. And there's the lock ring. It's not budging. Okay, so now I'm just gonna weld the nut, the head of this screw, so we can actually get it out. I think it's coming out, dinner. And there she be. Out. Now we'll try this front one. Did it break? Yeah. Okay, most way out. That's actually pretty good. So what we're doing is we're trying to peel this edge out. Look at all that rust just flaking out of there. I'm amazed you got as many bolts out as you did. Is it rust didn't set there a long time. Yeah. yeah. We had to weld nuts on about 20 yeah. of them, it seemed like. <laughs> now we're just gonna walk this metal out really slow. We'll grind it, get all these marks off, and then we'll hammer it again. All right, that feels a lot better. Ed, when we were when we were pulling it out of the forest, yeah. every time we'd hit something with the banana or with this, we would say, "Sorry, Robbie." <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then we had to, we fixed the banana first, got all those dents out, knowing I was gonna yeah. have to pull dents out of this one. We didn't know that big rock was under the water when they hit it. We should should have done a recon mission and sent yeah. Matt down to check. I wanted to get some tubes and float it, but Matt, oh, boy, the hell. Then Lizzie had to go diving. 
That's funny. At least he got it out. <laughs> Let's go and work on the grill. So this grill, we sourced from a fan back east. Great. So they yeah. sent it to me, and I ended up having to fix all the cracks and get it perfect so we could paint it and put it on the nugget. Mine was bent too bad or broke? It got broke when it hit the rock. Yeah, but couldn't you weld it? The Plastic. Yeah. Part of it was missing, or I could have, oh. but it was the whole corner was gone. Oh, uh -huh. Yeah, I'm amazed at all the rust that was on it and you done getting them bolts out. So I'm cutting the cracks so I can weld them back up. Now we're building it up with, with round rod. Flatten her out. As I'm rebuilding this lower tab, we've got rod in there. Now we're gonna form it. Cool that down to where it's rigid. It's all one piece now. Can't even tell it was broken. Those are the last of the crackies. We've got three of them. Tape off these two, weld them up, melt it all together. Crack is fixed. Thank you to the viewer that sent it to mm -hmm. us. This thing is awesome. But that grill is fixed. We're gonna go over to where they're sandblasting. Getting ready to start on that. You can see how rusted out this is. What was that, the top? That was the battery box on the fender. Oh, I didn't look at that. Yeah, it was, it was, was pretty shot. rusty. Totally. totally. I'm an amateur. Did you ever work on anything this bad? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, and they're out there in my bar, usually. Yeah, this is a, a lot of firsts on this one. They got all the paint stripped off. Next up on the chopping block is the frame. Now we're going to get the zinc primer. We're going to put that on and get this in the oven. So this is your frame and your axle housing. I thought Paul put different axle housings under it. It is, but these are the axle oh. housing that we put in it. They're getting powder coated here. Oh. These are these are the ones we got from Eric. Oh. The panel temperature's up to 250, so we're gonna go pull it out and bring it in and put some black on it. We're gonna use prismatic powder on this. All the powder's on. This is going back in the oven. Got that all blasted up nice. This looks awesome. I wish you guys could see this. Did you see Flat Ed in the background? Huh? We took Flat Ed with us everywhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got the frame ready to go. We're gonna get it all loaded up on the tow truck. Look at that. Nice. Looks like it's brand new, just bought from the store. Now we've got the tedious task of getting it all put back together. We're gonna load this up on the tow truck and this is off to sandblasting. You powder coated it? The frame and the axle housings, yes. Oh, everything didn't, everything didn't, else is paint. I didn't know you did that. No, we, well, we went to a place and did it. Oh. We're gonna take off and get back to the shop and get working on the frame. That's the bushings that we can get. This is the bushing that we need. Don't try this at home. Look at that. All the way even, all the way around. I can't even believe it. Awesome. Does it nice, fit? Nice, tight fit. One, two, <laughs> Absolutely. We're putting all brand new everything in this frame and axles. Do we love it? So we're gonna start getting this front end together. We are gonna get the inner axle seals put in this front end. So we're gonna pack this bearing up and then we're gonna pound the seal in and one hub will be ready. We're gonna take our bearing and we're just gonna push. Push until it's loaded. That's what Matt needs. <laughs> yeah, that's right, he does. I'm, I'm old school. He, it all, he gets it all over his hand. <laughs> he wears it. We'll grease the rollers. All right, that seal is in. So we're gonna get the front leaves put in. So now we've got the shocks put in. Gotta get the wiper seals put over this first. We'll call that nice and greasy. All right, so these guys went up and got the body back. I'm gonna set the preload on this bearing. So we're just gonna get this started, get it installed. That is done. Milestar Patagonials. These, those are the tires that you took a picture with. That's where we got the picture that we had printed for Flat Ed. Oh, oh, and then yeah. the tires, we put them on the wheels. <laughs> 
That takes regular 80, 90 gear oil. I believe so. Yeah. Putting the right, heart get a back book, into the right. nugget. Right there. We're going to put the rear end in. <laughs> My screw up was going to benefit Ed. I cut the axle. Look at that. And I just ordered Ed a pair of chromoly axle shafts. Trail gear already came through. We have chromoly axles. Perfect spline, just the same. We are heating this. New axles. Huh? Yeah, I ruined them. Oh, did you? <laughs> when I was taking the bearing off, oh. I pressed it on without the keeper. So then I had to take the coupler back off and I cut through the axle. So I had oh. to order you a set of chromoly axle shafts. What all did you have to buy new? We got all new sills and bearings. Yeah. And then we got the axle shafts. Brake shoes. Oh yeah, all the brakes yeah. are brand new. Yep, so pretty much everything that we, if we didn't replace it, Paul replaced it. Oh. So this, this is the picture. Oh yeah, I remember that. Those are, those <laughs> those are your, are your tires. tires. I didn't know it. Your spare tires out there in the tire shed. <laughs> yeah. Have I got a rim? Yeah, it's all mounted oh. up, ready to go. Man. Okay, hurry! Once it cools, it'll stay. I got all brand new nuts, fresh nuts on the back, fresh bolts up front. All right, got to put the e-brake lever in. Now we're going to put the brake pad on. It's like a new brake cylinder, everything. Yeah. yeah. I tried to hone them old rusty ones out and that don't work much. Yeah, no, they're all brand new. Paul put all brand new brake lines, a, a new master cylinder, everything. Lines, everything. Everything's new. I'll have to raise it up and look at it. Yeah, we'll put it on the <laughs> oh, list. Yeah. We'll <laughs> all right, so we finally got this frame all detailed up. Got every single nut and bolt and washer and everything changed on it. All right, so we've got the hood, the driver's fender, the back door. Cody's working on the front radiator support. Oh, sanding begins. <laughs> we were one solid month with nothing but sanding. It was uh, after torture. After sandblasted it. Yes. So we, it was rough after the sandblasting, and so we went through and 180 grit DA'd everything. What, what he, uh... It was too yeah. rough, it was too rough from the sandblasters. He, he used too big a grit or... Yep, oh, a little bit too big a grit. I'd have made him do that, he got, <laughs> got too close with it. Something, so we sanded it out oh, and got man. it all good. Yeah, that pretty light tin. He ought have seen that when he was doing it. You, you would have thought. <laughs> Getting some of the lumps out. Wow. It's smoothed up pretty nice. That should work. Oh yeah, that feels good. This is where Paul had to cut the whole thing out. Couple spots there. This is all smoothed in. This has got to get rebuilt out of some sheet metal. So the battery must have just corroded that all out. All right, so I've got a couple of things ready to be epoxied. The front two doors, and I'm gonna epoxy the roof bows. Here's the first look at the Golden Nuggets color. Gold! What'd you thin that with? Um, it's just a medium reducer. A medium temperature. This PPG Street Suites Sun Gold looks amazing. So we're gonna fix all this. Kinda just peel it out of the way. We got this big one right here. Get it fixed up nice. Check this out. Got my metal back where it needs to be. We've got some spots we're gonna have to beat out by hand. Just a little bit more. You done it that up pretty good, didn't you? <laughs> We're gonna fit the grill. Look at that guy. Look at that. Perfect. That grill looks pretty good. We're gonna be building the battery box, so we need to recess that thing like down into here. Okay, right there to the bottom of the rotted out battery tray. Eight inches. Battery can't be more than six and a half tops. I am straightening this out with air. These are airbag wedges spread out like this. Like a massage. I never used those when I was doing body work. I just led with the wooden pedal and the beeswax and melted the lead on it. That's what I did. I wish, radiator stuff. I wish I knew how to do lead. Yeah. yeah. Oh, was, it's, it's easy. It's way before just, my time. It's actually coming out. 
We have rust here in the pan and the new battery will come out, hit this roll here. I got the top squared off. We'll have ourselves a battery box. Right here, what I'm doing is just making a lot of little welds. I'm gonna get all this indented and it'll pull. This metal is actually moving fairly decent. This is gonna be our new battery tray. Expertly building it. Put a little mounting brace underneath that. What we're doing is making sure that the metal that we move is gonna clear the frame. So this is hitting right here. That's gonna need hammer and dolly here. So Hillbilly worked hard on all these hinges and these cover plates. We might as well paint them. Yeah, I painted 15 cars one day in Reno. Really? <laughs> All enamel, no. All single stage? Yeah, just fast. That is awesome. In the oven, you know, hot oven, and then just run them in, run them out. That is so cool. <laughs> what year was that? I forget. <laughs> Way before my time, probably. That was 70s. Oh, yeah. 80s. I wasn't born until 89. <laughs> just taking care of some of Paul's nice beaded welds. So we're gonna do a little bit of touch up welding. Now we're gonna make sure the battery fit. I think it's gonna work. Oh, look at that. We've even got cooling vents right by the battery. After the welds got finished up on the battery tray, just gonna smooth out the little imperfections. I'm just feathering these welds. Not a lot of Bondo on it, is there? A little baby skim coat on pretty much all of it. I still have yeah. nightmares from sanding this. <laughs> I look at this and I'm getting anxiety because I remember all of this. <laughs> <laughs> we want to put epoxy down before we put the bulk of the mud work. All right, so we got this all roughed out pretty good. I'm trying to build up this edge a little bit, get that flat. We're gonna lay epoxy now. All right, so we're gonna do some etch on the metal and we're gonna do some elastic polyolefin adhesion promoter on the plastic grill. We're getting the primer all mixed up. Gonna mix up six ounces. Is that primer? Yeah. That's a urethane primer. No. Okay, now we're getting these blocked out. See that guide coat? It just disappear as you're sanding. Two hours worth of work here. That doesn't even look like I've done a dang thing. Chad. So we've got half the grill done now. That was Chad. Yeah. He helped a lot with the wiring, but he came up for two weekends and helped me get oh. some of the rust repair done and some of the metal work done. He was a big help. Now I've just got to whittle the suz, and then we'll let Cody do the uki. We're gonna bolt up this hitch. We put the ball on for the trailer. Moment of truth. Very critical that we clean these so we don't get imperfections. Nice. So, I'm put, I just put epoxy down over everything. And then, yeah, we'll jam out the insides and then we do our body work on the outside over the epoxy. Is that a little thicker than regular primer? It's not. Bonds better? Or? Yeah, it bonds directly to metal. Yeah. That's what the epoxy does. So you don't have to put an etching primer or anything like that. Look at how good that looks. It's gold. It is looking so good. It's just gonna set off the front end of the golden nugget so well. It's beautiful. So Chad's getting all the little pinholes of rust welded up. It was clear and full of rust. You can see all the rust on the floor. Cody's been working on this roof panel. Cody's been working this hood over. Now we gotta work on the inside. Yeah, a lot of times I'd have to put down three or four coats of that tangible primer. Mm -hmm. Build it up and yep. save bond doing that. Yep, so that's after we did the epoxy, you'll see we did a skim coat of mud work on it, and then we put what's called polyester primer. So oh, polyester is a super high build. It's like a sprayable glaze. And then we blocked all that down with 180, 
And then we put our urethane primer over top of that Yay. and then prepped it out. Chad's just about got the body all whipped out. We've got most of the dents pulled. He's even got the rust all taken care of. He's got the factory crap weld put back on. It matches the other side. <laughs> no high spot. I wished it had a rear bumper. Oh, dang. I don't know, they didn't we, make it. We could, you could probably we, add we that. You yeah. Yeah. So we're just tapping those down. He's got this stud welded. Pull we'll it just up. get it powder coated at the same place. Yeah, I can take care of all that. Yeah, if I don't have a bumper, you might get it back to do body work on it. We're going to have to figure <laughs> out a bumper for you. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. With that door there, I don't want to ruin that door. Yeah, we'll have to put like a one of those big bumpers that can yeah. just hit anything in its way. It's all coming up. Yeah, yeah. We're going to get these parts all jammed out. So we got the hood and he's got the door. For the next four hours, me and Dinner are going to paint these parts. You got to make sure these things are super clean. So I'm probably going to wipe it down again after this. One to one mix ratio, 12 ounces of epoxy and 12 ounces of hardener. You put a hardener in that? Yep. It's a one-to-one -one ratio with hardener and epoxy. So now if I got some from me, I could just paint it without the hardener? Could that... Yeah, yeah. So this is just epoxy. The base, yeah. you could just do it without anything because it'll, oh. it'll dry. We just got a blow tack and static. We're going to get this thing going. Looking super gold, it's turning out nice. All right, time for clear coat. That's a clear coat. Huh? Yes, it's a base coat, clear coat. Is that going to peel off like it does on my Dodge out there? It better not. Oh. If it does, you've got a warranty. <laughs> <laughs> it's got four coats of clear on it. It does on all of vehicles I've seen, Dodges, and after. Yeah, so well, many. hopefully it doesn't. We'll yeah. just knock on metal that it doesn't. It's dark colors worse than white, you know, it peels off. Yeah, especially from the sun. All right, I've got everything jammed. Got two coats of clear over this gold. That means that everything on the inside is painted. I have just about got what I can vacuum. So we're gonna get this thing dumped over. We're gonna need to get all that out of here. I've been tapping for quite a while and it keeps coming. So I'm gonna spread my plastic filler on the center. So I'm just getting this pulled tight. So now I'm rotating it to see if anything else comes out. <laughs> it just keeps coming. Yep. Getting all this sanded. <laughs> Got a little spot there, maybe a little bit here. It looks like you're in sync. There you go. Final skim coat on a couple areas on the grill. We had to build a custom block, a custom fit right inside the grooves. We did a skim coat of glaze on this, take care of the deep scratches and a couple of the pinholes in that. Just putting some etch downs. This brace wasn't welded on this inner one, so I ran a bead on both sides so we didn't have no vibration and rattling noise. What is that thing? That's a belt grinder. Oh. Matt's uh, got one hanging on his wall. Yeah, yeah we got one here. I'll have <laughs> to get it hanging. out. They're Dang hanging. it. That means if he uses it, I won't get it. I'm just kidding. It's a very handy tool. Taping seams off so we can seam won't seal it. I didn't know there's that much body work, man. Yeah. Oh, that's it. It that hasn't was... started yet. Yeah, this is just the first part. What I'm doing is getting ready to put polyester primer on the whole thing. Running the seam sealer.
All right, so we've got it all guide coated. So after this, we'll block it all down. Then we'll put actual primer over top of it. Then we'll prep that all down with 600 and then we'll be spraying gold. So now we're gonna flip this body. And we're gonna seam seal the underside. Now we're gonna start the process of getting this thing jammed out. We're gonna actually rotate the body. We're gonna do as much underside, inside roof as we can. Well, that's better than new, all that coating, painting and everything. Oh yeah. You want to let the block and your sandpaper do the work. You've about got a racing stripe. This is how you get lines straight. Well, these are little minor imperfections that you don't necessarily feel until you start blocking. It's getting there. Totally worth it. This back door is ready for polyester primer. You just gotta get all these edges sanded and they gotta be sanded by hand and then the hood is ready to prime. Go, just about got all our edges caught. Perfect. <laughs> See who that is? What? That's our guardian. Oh, well you got clothes on it? Yeah, we, well he had to wear a different shirt for the golden nugget. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. We would no. put we would put flat Ed all over the shop watching us. You can't tell that's not a real person. I know. We would. That I'd be worth a lot of people. <laughs> I'd be sanding, and I'd see you out of the corner of my eye, I'm like what yeah. the heck? <laughs> he snuck in. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that took a minute to get used to. Like I said, he approved every single decision we had. We never got told no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take this over to the booth. Okay, so we got all the parts in here for the final primer. So we'll get it masked, waxed, and greased, and get it primed. And it is time to get final primer put on. So I got the center all worked out, got the top all worked out. The cowl is done. One of the motor mount bolts stripped out and was tightening it in. So I'm re-tapping it a size bigger so we can bolt the motor back down. So we got to make it fit. Now we're going to lower this down and just let it sit on that mount. All right, success. It's tight. I have to look, make the frame look all good. It's looking good again. Looking worthy for the nugget body to go on it. Bram, 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 bram. Brand new exhaust. Birdie. We're gonna tack this. Got it tacked. Now we're gonna pull it all back apart. Got the salt welded in. There's more sanding to do. The eagle has landed. See, we painted the entire underside of the body before we put it back on the frame. So now we've got it back on the frame. And then I noticed you got you sanded out some new paint there. Yeah, because we repaint that. Well, so we jammed the inside, and the overspray goes on the outside. And so then we sanded it all back off oh. to epoxy. Huh. Back on the frame. We made the bolt hole line up. Hopefully, this bolt never has to come out again. I got the bolt in, and it's tight. <laughs> I think it's safe to say it's mounted. Huh. We've got the body on the frame. Take a look at this thing. It is looking awesome. We've got the fender, the grill support, the hood. So we're starting blocking the final primer. At least that pushes around easy. Yeah, it's so light, <laughs> yeah. so little. Everything's all masked up. We're gonna wax and grease it, blow tack and static it, and then we're polyester priming it. So we're gonna get the polyester put on now. I've got Hillbilly filming.
We're all polyestered. We've got a guide coated. Right now we're laying down etch on the bare metal spots first before we hit it with the regular primer. All right, we're almost to the final sanding of the polyester primer on the body. We're gonna be getting the exhaust Cerakoted. I'm gonna hurry and pull it off. Okay, so we're gonna take this up, get it blasted, and we're Cerakoting the entire exhaust system. All we gotta do is final prime this, prep it, then paint it. What I just did is I put down metal etch. What the metal etch does is it bites into the metal and the primer actually sticks to the etch that sticks to the metal. It's primer time. So I just guide coated everything. Got like four days worth of sanding. So I'm gonna 320 block all my flat spots that are the highest. Taking off all of our, all of our edges so we can keep our body lines, going through and blocking it out, getting it straight. Steering wheel installed, gas pedal installed, brake pedal installed. We've got the golden nugget exhaust header. And we are gonna spray. Oh, so what we're doing here, we put a ceramic coating on your exhaust. And it'll, it's good up to 1800 degrees. It's called Cerakote. And it actually helps keep heat inside the exhaust and push it out. Really? I yeah. didn't know that. So and that don't burn off. Nope. Huh? Unless you get it over 1800 degrees. Huh. So. Stuff is way different than paint, but it's also extremely easy to spray. All right, so all the Cerakoting's done. But we're getting to the home stretch to get color on this. How to build a custom block. Put a little handle on it. Blocking and blocking. All the blocking and taping is done. We've got all the dry sanding done. Now, we gotta start the wet sanding! I'm just gonna do this for the next 48 hours. My fingerprints are non-existent anymore. All right, so what I'm gonna do is bead this out, the seam sealer. I will smooth it out, and then I'm gonna peel the tape off simultaneously. In one motion. Everything's done on the body. We're opening these doors for the very last time. This is the final time the Golden Nugget will ever go in that paint booth. Just to heat my paint with the barbecue grill starter, electric, and just stick it in the can and heat, to heat it up real hot. And put it on. <laughs> <laughs> Thin it out, because it was hot. That's awesome. Time to put down the gold base coat. We're gonna let it sit and gas out. What that means is all these solvents are evaporating out of the base coat. We bolted everything up so there's no paint lines. Pause it. So what we did here, see how we started and all the parts were on stands? Then we bolted it all together and painted everything together so the color was correct. Because that gold, it was a fun one to paint. Yeah. It took us <laughs> two days to spray it. Yeah. All right. That's just like enamel. It's not mag uh, metallic. Right. It's metallic. Oh, is it metallic? Yep, it has a thing called Zerillic Pearl in it. Oh, yeah, they're a little harder. We've got all the base coat finally done. We're going to take it all apart again, set it all out on the stand, then we're clearing it. I forgot that you did that. Yeah, had to take had to take it apart and put it together, like, twice. And then I put four coats of clear on it, really heavy coats of clear, so if there's any imperfections, we can fix them, or if it gets scratched, it shouldn't scratch all the way through. There should be a lot of clear there to protect it. We've got the Golden Nugget all cleared. Everything turned out awesome. It took forever to get four coats of clear on. This is how many times I had to remix clear all these cups. That's how many quarts it took. All right, we're going to take all the parts over. I have all brand new stainless steel bolts for the doors. We're calling that good. Driver's door is as good as done. 
We're gonna pull this forward and get the back door on it now. That's all we could ask for. Okay, so Mean Dinner's gonna get the header manifold put in. I don't know how you got that passenger door to fit. It's a lot of work. Yeah. There we go. Look at them shiny new bolts. So now I gotta get the receivers reinstalled. Now I'll tighten them down. It's not going nowhere. So we've got some bolts that we're gonna install the fender with. All right, one mo. Got it. Right there. So we're gonna have the laminated windshield and then tempered side windows Pause and it. back glass. So I had a custom set of windows made for it. Really? We took the originals as templates and had a company temper them and cut a brand new windshield out for the front. The front is safety glass, it's laminated, and all your side windows are tempered. What was in it, just regular glass or something? Yeah, well, it was tempered glass, but it was all old, so we had brand new windows made. Well, I didn't know you did that. Hey, yeah. is it worth it to do that? Well, they're all new. <laughs> they look good. You can see through them. Yeah. Now we're putting the windshield wiper squirters in. You literally put them in the hole, you tighten them up with a nut on the bottom. And we're gonna make our own door weather stripping. So I'm gonna start my rubber right in the center. I'm just gonna work it on. Now I've gotta cut this to fit. It looks exactly like it's supposed to. I've just gotta get my inner handle rod connected, get my keeper clip on it. Now Ed can get out if he gets stuck in the back. Look at that. Beep. Feels pretty good. We'll call that tight. We have to build our own check straps for all three doors. That's gonna be perfect. So this is a 1972 door check strap. They don't make them anymore. It'll be the exact same size so the door opens and closes correctly. Don't try this at home, kids. Look at those perfect round holes. That starts pulling, stops it, it folds out of the way. It doesn't even go into the door jam. Nice. Got it. One more to fix. My next task is restoring the fuel cap. We pull one sill out. Right, there's another sill. Let's get our third sill out. To keep it, the door locks. The ignition keep it, the door locks. I'm not 100% sure. Oh. We might have to check that. Okay, so I've got the seal all cut up, fitting good. And that's what it looks like all done. Moment of truth. I'm going to install the radiator. I already got the rubber bushings in the holes. Just like that. So now I'm putting the top mount on, so that way it doesn't sit in there and flop around. Now we're gonna get our striker plate on. I think I'm gonna call it there. Door number two is done. Door number three, done. Get all this felting set. We've got the run channel all the way down inside of there. We've got all this nice felting all the way around. We need six holes. Doing it over some wood. Uh, yeah, we did use a plastic bag for an extra layer of protection. That's fitting like a glove. Now we've got to disassemble the inside of the door. Got to take the regulator off. Got to take the run channel track off. Wiggle that window in, set it up, maneuver the rollers on. Then we'll install the window and we'll put this inside belt molding on after the window's installed. Last thing on the inside of this door, we just need to put the window stop. All done. So we're gonna be passing it off to Fabrats so they can get all the brake lines, fuel lines, wiring, and everything done to this so the Golden Nugget runs. That ain't going nowhere. <laughs> nope. We're about an hour and a half out of balls. And that was our portion. That was what? Three or four or five weeks ago. Yeah, five March weeks. or May 30th, we dropped it off. Yeah. And they were able to get it all finished in just a few weeks after to give it back to you. <laughs> yeah, you went up there a couple days later. 
I'm surprised Wes wouldn't say, hey, you know, I got to do some other shopping, so can't take you. Or I know. You know <laughs> it's even Paul a lot of work. But hey, you were able to go see that it wasn't there. It was at my shop. <laughs> <laughs> he could have threw a tarp over it, and I wouldn't have known. But. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I bet you would have. <laughs> yeah. You're a good detective, Ed. <laughs> We showed you the golden nugget. Yeah. Now we're going to show you the Rokon oh. and the trailer. Yeah. That'd so. be good. That'd be good. All right. So we just got a package from SRK Cycles. We are going to inflate this fuel tank. Got us a new fuel cap. We're going to put the sucker up to 100 PSI. We're going to add a little bit of heat to that dent. And we're going to see if it'll come out. Pause it real quick. I had so, no, <laughs> no idea you could pop that out of there. I, I didn't. I was just pissing the internet off. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> I did put air in it. But we only put like two pounds. It was it was mainly just to get all the people mad. Get them riled up. <laughs> yeah. So we'll show you what we did. This will hold air. We've got a cracked weld from here to here. We've got a cracked weld in here. So we're gonna try to fix those. Gonna braze all that up. They were cracked around there. So yes, vibration oh. cracks. So if you look, those oh. little thread pieces were brazed to the steel gas tank. So we had to rebraze them because we, we fixed all the dents in it and then we sent it up and had it acid dipped and had the inside relined. So it should not leak in yeah. theory. A lot of work on it. Yeah. yeah. So this was this was the time frame when the bike was actually back in Pennsylvania at, at Sean's with Bikes and Beards. He shipped me that gas tank uh, and then I fixed it, it all and, it. and then shipped it back. Shipped it back. Yeah. Yep. Can you buy a new tank? I think they sell plastic ones now, oh. and so we wanted to make sure you had your original. A little high here. Okay, that's feeling pretty good. These are our two impact points, so we're gonna work those. We got this tank to seal. We're gonna pressurize it, and we're gonna pull these dent out. Got all the dents pulled out of this thing. Check this out. So we went and had this acid dipped and they lined and sealed the inside of this gas tank. No leaks, nothing. I'm gonna put some all metal on this and I'm gonna make the outside dents disappear. You can see the difference. And I'm gonna clean up all my edges and get those all down to bare metal. <laughs> Where'd you find the label to go back on it? eBay. Huh? I oh, found yeah? it on eBay. Really? Yeah. All right, so I've got my all metal. I'm gonna let this harden up and then I will sand it. So I've got this all sanded and it is ready to be primered. I'm gonna go set it up so in the booth. This is what milking looks like. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I became a dairy farmer on this project. A what? A dairy farmer. Why? Hey, how's that? Because I milked it. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, some people were pretty mad. They're like, you need to be nice to Ed and give him his stuff back, you're, idiot. You're taking way too long. <laughs> so, yeah, now I'm, I've retired from dairy farming, though. Yeah. It's just not a career I want to be in. So I got the tank all masked up. It's wired to the arm. We're going to use our solvent base wax and grease remover. So I've got the wash primer loaded up in my gun. I'm gonna get some primer laid down on it. All right, so three coats later, it's got a guide coated. So I'm starting with some 320. I'm gonna finish blocking it out, block the front. Okay, got this all blocked out. Got my guide coat. So I'm just gonna fill this. I've got this all filled and sanded. I already etched the bare metal, so we're gonna get this primer on it. The guide coated up. So I've just about got this all sanded. It's gonna look really good on that freshly rebuilt Rokon. What I'm building is a little stand to prop this up to where I can paint it inside and out. I've about got my contraption made. That's me. <laughs> yeah, I had, to, I had to figure out a way to paint up inside and the outside all at the same time. So I built a little stand to hold it. Got me a stand all built for the Rokon tank. Look how young you were back then. I know. I finally became a real man like a month ago. Yeah, nice. <laughs> got it all masked. Now we just gotta blow tack and static it. 
No, it's time to put base coat on. Time to clear. It's gonna look good out in the sun, that's for sure. Like, it literally looks like a gold nugget right here. Like our little stand held. We got Tom Tom delivering the trailer for the Rokon. I spent the last week working with Lizzie. She welded 100% of this trailer. It's got a little stinger in the front for him to pull the tire in and a little ramp on the back. It's got small tires, drop axle, just really low so it'll be easy for him to use. We're not 100% sure the Rokon's gonna fit. You might have to do a little rework. We're also headed up to meet Tom Tom at Johnny Boy's house in Tooele. He's gonna be taking care of the trailer. Pause it real quick. So, did you notice how the trailer was like this on the truck? Yeah. We went and put, what did we call it? A gooseneck. Yeah, a gooseneck. So it kicked it up. Oh. So that's why it fits now. But it only- It was wrong the first time. And it yeah. only fits your golden nugget. Yeah, I can see it, <laughs> yeah. We just got to Powder Extreme Coatings. We we're here with Kevin. He's gonna come out and take a look at the Rokon trailer. My buddy, Ed, he's 84 years old. We're doing all this for him. So, and see that guy right there? Yeah. That's the guy in Salt Lake I keep telling you about. Oh. Yeah, that's where everything always always was. Him right there. Is in Salt Lake. Yeah. Gonna grab the trailer, bring it over, cut it, chop it, extend it, whatever he's gonna do to fix it. <laughs> this means to go here somewhere. Right there. So Tom Tom's got the trailer all fixed. It is now a gooseneck that will only fit on the Golden Nugget. <laughs> <laughs> no one can borrow your trailer, Ed. Yeah. It won't work. Yeah, it won't even fit on the Dakota. <laughs> only on the Golden Nugget. We're gonna be disassembling the Golden Nugget trailer for the Rokon and we're gonna be taking it up to Powder Extreme Coatings. Look at that. <laughs> that ain't going nowhere. Disassembling the axle out of it. We're pulling the spindles off. Comes right apart. Bada bing, bada boom. Gotta pull this outer cap off. So we're gonna take the coupler apart as well. Don't want the spindles to get marred or messed up transporting it. All right, so we made it to Powder Extreme Coatings. Got the trailer loaded up. You just saw Kevin on the forklift. He put it on the bed for us. Get this pulled in here. We're gonna be Cerakoting the axle. We're gonna Cerakote the flat black that we did the exhaust. And then for the bearing caps, we are gonna hit those with burnt bronze at the end. Yeah, he got hit bad there. Yeah, it came back and whacked him real good. He had a goose egg for a week. <laughs> Plan B. Take two. Don't touch it. Don't breathe on it. I'm gonna wax and grease it. So now I'm gonna blow tack and static it. All right, it's time to get this little trailer sealed. All right, we got everything sealed. Just like that, it's all masked up. That was quick. Surprise, we're painting it black. We let this all flash out. It's time to get these fenders unmasked. We're doing two coats of clear. Time to let that sit for 10 minutes. So I've talked to my brother that's a carpenter. He's gonna be doing all the woodworking on the trailer. Do not draw. <laughs> Come squeeze this sucker together. Good job. So we've got the axle in right. We've got the leaf springs in correctly. We're gonna get those things buzzed up tight. Just like that. I'm excited to see what Sean with Bikes and Beards did to that Rokon. So I like to just get the spindle all nice and greased. Generous portion 
of gravy in there. Good if you ask me. All right, it's wheel time. 50 PSI. I would do it at 45. All right, we're gonna run 40. <laughs> All right, so we've got the Golden Nugget trailer for the Rokon completely reassembled. My brother's gonna be coming and helping us get all the wood made and put on the trailer, and then we're gonna have it all finished up. Well, you've done a lot of work on it. Yeah, so this wood, it's reclaimed barn wood out of a shed that was in Manti, Utah for like 100 years. My brother disassembled the building, and then we were able to cut them, plane them, and fit them on the trailer. So they're like that thick, and they're... <laughs> They've got character. It looks like it. We're gonna go test fit them. Like a glove. I think this old barn wood is gonna look really good all clear coated. This wood, I found out, is red pine. I don't even use it anymore. Everything is clamped up. We're gonna make marks and drill holes and get this thing bolted. Got it all varnished up. It's dry. What's best to put on that once in a while or when it? Um, he used just a clear varnish, clear just a wood varnish. varnish. Yeah, but it should hold up for a, quite a while, so. All the slats are done. We got a special delivery today. We're gonna get this thing unboxed. Ooh, look at that. It still looks good. This made it all the way to Pennsylvania and back. Not a scratch, not a dent, not a ding. <laughs> Look at that, that's our motorcycle lift. I thought they'd ship it together. They, they compacted it all so it would fit in that oh, crate. Yeah. So we put it together and then we went, and we went and rode it. All right, we're gonna get that in nice and tight. I'm just gonna put a little bit in, make sure this thing's got fuel going through it. So now we're gonna get this turned on, some fuel flowing. Oh. Now that we know it runs, we're gonna back it out, we're gonna get this trailer hooked up, and we're gonna go for a ride. Do you know how to drive that? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can, you can help but ride it. Yeah, it's too cool not to ride. Yeah, right there we noticed the wheel didn't fit. Yeah, I noticed that. It fits now, though. Because we redid the trailer. Yep. <laughs> you, had, you redone it? We had to, look. We've had a little bit of a dilemma. The front tire doesn't fit. So we've actually got to cut this thing, extend it out, and redo the trailer. We had an issue with the sealer and the base coat. Paint comes off in sheets. Luckily, we had two issues. I screwed the paint up and the front fork thing wasn't wide enough. So we got to redo it. Supposed to do Man, that. all that work on that. <laughs> Had to make sure it was good for you. <laughs> Paint is not supposed to do that. We're gonna be sandblasting this thing back down and making it perfect for Ed. Kind of weird grinding on a brand new trailer that you just painted. But I think it'll work like this. It's wide enough for the sprocket. I say we do an inch. There's an inch. Let's go fit that in and see if it's gonna work. We need to cut two little feeties for the bottoms of that. They're five eighths of an inch. So we got the hoop all extended. So we got to figure out a strap system so that the back ramp holds itself in place. We got to make sure that's above the wood. So I'm going to drill a hole through both of these, and I'm going to put a pin in it, and then I'm going to weld the pin. We've got two straps for that ramp to hold it up. We've got the front all widened to where the tire fits in it. Now all we got to do is get this thing pulled apart so we can get it re-sandblasted so we can redo it. None of the Cerakote has to get redone because that all turned out great. 
All right, we've got this all finished up. This is our front chain. So we had two bolts at the back. This gearbox has got all brand new seals and all we're doing is taking this off, putting it on the shelf. We gotta put that somewhere safe. We're just gonna leave all of this together. That's for the throttle. Voila, just lifts right off. Look at these springs. This old stuff is so cool to me. Just a little keeper screw that clamps down on the bolt. If you look right here, we got a cracked fork. So we're gonna definitely have to do a little bit of repair work. Been in there for a minute. You can smell it. Yeah. <laughs> Way simpler than a car, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm removing the rear drive chain. So I got the little mini drive chain out. There's the exhaust. That is the coolest little thing. One premium kickstand. Smaller chainsaws weigh more than this. This is like a weed whacker. We'll want to polish that up. That is the coolest thing. This has a one-way spring on it. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is taking part. Go right there. Kevin did an awesome job. We're gonna get it all loaded up and get back to the shop. So this is a brace. It ain't pretty, but well, that'll do. So we had to braze a couple holes in the exhaust too. Oh. So that's what we're doing there. And then this is this is the crack I was telling you about. Yeah. Oh. Glad you found that. Yeah, after it got sandblasted, we could see it. See how tried the edges of the crack? Now that crack can't continue. I'm just gonna cut the crack to open it up a little. I think that will work. Is that good enough? We're gonna put it in the blast cabinet, get those spots all sand blasted up. So we got those all spot blasted. Get this locked on, faith coat turn. Mixy, mixy. It's time to make this thing glossy. You had to tear it all apart. I thought you could just pull a motor and tires and yeah. prime it and paint it. But you just, no, you had to, we had to pull every did. single nut and bolt out of it. Boy, yeah. So, and then right here, we actually put a ceramic coating on your exhaust it's called Cerakote yeah. and that's that's what it it can get up to 1800 degrees before it fails and it so now the second time so when we redid the trailer cuz we were it was like 2 weeks ago yeah i had the trailer powder coated instead of painting it because we didn't have time to get it all back and oh, get everything huh. done we were in a rush to get it back to you so you can see here where kevin's powder coating it All right, so we've got the trailer all loaded up. Kevin did an awesome job, him and his crew. We're gonna get it off, we're gonna get it sanded, get it in the booth, and get it sprayed. So we still had to paint the fenders gold. So we did that after. We're gonna get some white base coat down to seal up this black. Then we're putting our gold on it. It's gonna look just as good as it did the first time, but it's gonna be better because we did it twice. <laughs> All that work just because the tongue and the well, and I wouldn't fit it in. Well, we let the sealer dry too long. <laughs> I, re I misread the TDS on it, and so when we put our base coat over it, it didn't stick to the sealer. So you could grab it and peel it off in sheets. Yeah. So you gotta, f we learned. I think this looks even better than it did the first time. Oh. 
And that is locked in. Get these mounted up, got the valve stem in it. I'll just pause it. Did you see Flat Ed just approving everything? Where at? Back it up. Right there, right next oh, to my wife. Oh yeah, there. You were just there the whole time making sure we did it all correctly. <laughs> It'd be neat to come up there and move him and stand there you, while you... Yeah, yeah go snap your fingers and, and you back, appear. You come back. You just... That'd be way funny. <laughs> All those are tight. The wood is done. All right, so we've got this trailer done again. Version two. Last night, me and Demery went to Hermanson's Hardware here in Ephraim. We cleaned out all their bolts. So we got the drive shaft in and we got the rear gearbox. The engine's next. That's a Chrysler engine. Yeah, it's sweet. Air cleaner's back on. Okay. How many CCs is that little Chrysler, do you know? Uh, I never. I don't know. I was gonna ask Craig, I don't. It looks like it's about five or six cc's. <laughs> I know, it revs up high. Yeah, when you're doing about 25 miles an hour, that thing's just, nah! It goes just like this for the shifter. It's always good to th clean your threads. I'll get the forks and then we'll get them installed. Just gonna wiggle, wiggle, wiggle it. It literally went right in. So this is one way to get some springs. Yeah, the miter boxes are the trickiest thing probably on there. Yeah, well, and it was fun trying to get bolts into this spring because we had to get a wrench in there to tighten them because you couldn't put a socket in it. Oh. So we, we fought the seat springs pretty hard. The miter boxes, they went in pretty easy. And they've got a spring in there for the front for the front miter box. It's like a Chinese finger trap. Oh, it's a and sprag it, is what Yeah, it is, it is so cool. Huh. Just locks up tight and then releases. Installed. Here we got our kickstand all put in. All right, we got the brakes all set up. It's got the new pucks in there. Rack is on. That's for dynamite. And this has got high temp Cerakote on it so it can get super hot. Starting to look like a bike again. This is exciting. Whoop. Was that brake putt still pretty thick? It has brand new ones in it. Oh, really? Yeah, you got oh, some new yeah. brake pads on this. Oh, oh. Let's put this chain on. You go tumbling with dynamite, we want to make sure it's because you pressed the brakes too hard, not because they <laughs> yeah. quit working. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I always had to have extra ones on hand. Fender's done. I'm in. This is a tight fit for this chain. All right, we're all linked up. Right like it should. This is where it's gonna live. The ramp is tight. Straps are tight, the bike is tight. Things ready to get put behind the golden nugget and go to the mine. Anyway, that's pretty much it for showing you all the work that we did. Uh, I appreciate it. No, we yeah. appreciate you. We're, we're grateful that we were given the opportunity to even be able to do this for you. <laughs> I mean, it's not easy to work on something you've never worked on before. Yeah. And tear out the miter boxes and get everything back right. Well, yeah. luckily, Luckily, we... You didn't even have a book on it, did you? No. Oh. No, I took pictures. <laughs> so... When we wanted to do all of this for you, so we started with the golden nugget, and when you started getting antsy and irritated about the golden nugget, then we started working on your Rokun to keep you busy. Uh -huh. That's why we did it that way. <laughs> did it work? Yeah. <laughs> we had to... Had to come up with distractions all the yeah. time for you. Luckily, you didn't find out. Yeah, I didn't have a clue. And then I've got one thing for Matt as a thank you. So we made him a little, a little book. 
And this is volume one, issue one. The Golden Nugget. Getting around that one turn, boy, was really bad. Oh, that wow. was after we got it out. That's See? worse than I thought. And this is when I brought the, the new body parts. I went down to Modesto to get those. That's after it got to Robbie's and they started taking it apart to clean it. And there you are, picking the color for the Rocon. For the golden nugget. <laughs> There's dinner. Who took all these pictures? Just with the camera? My Wait. wife took them out of the videos. Gee, that's it. Yeah. That's cool, huh? My wife, Demery, put this book together. There it is. You gonna keep this here? Yes. Yeah, I'm, yeah we're gonna have it so you can show it to people. And then, if any of you wanna buy one of these books, we're gonna do a pre-sell right after this video drops for your very own issue of The Golden Nugget. We're not sure yet if it's gonna be a magazine or a softback or what, but we are gonna have it for sale. And we are gonna be taking pre-orders right now on RobbieLayton.com. So we'll get one for the shop, one for you to keep. All right, so that was a very condensed version of all the videos that we did to put your Golden Nugget together. A lot of work. It was a lot of work, but it was totally worth it. I really appreciate it. We appreciate Matt, and we're grateful that we had the opportunity to be a part of it. Anytime. You need to head over to Matt's Off-Road Recovery and check out the reveal that was just posted. So we got one more thing. I think we need to go outside for it though, Ed. Do I know about this? <laughs> Thanks for watching.